You don't need to tell me to tell you that the COVID-19 disaster has changed everything, including for the crypto and blockchain industry. Hello again, I'm Michael Casey, Chief Content Officer at Coindesk. Welcome to the morning edition of a show we're calling Coronavirus, Blockchain and the Meaning of Life. Joining me for the next 30 minutes is widely followed crypto journalist, podcaster and author, Laura Shin. Welcome, Laura. Hi there. Hey, you've just turned in a book manuscript. Tell us about it. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having me on. The book covers the rise of Ethereum and the 2017 frenzy around initial coin offerings. And it's called The Cryptopians, Idealism, Greed, Lies, and the Making of the First Big Cryptocurrency Craze. Can't wait to read it. Congratulations on getting to this point. Excited for Thank it. Thank you. So the COVID-19 era is not all bad news. There's been an outpouring of ingenuity, 3D printed ventilators, high-tech solutions for tracking the virus's spread, systems to move money, food, protective, protective gear, all that sort of stuff. The decentralized, scrappy, rules-be-damned blockchain community seems to be made for this moment. Uh, this show is going to explore the intersection between COVID-19 and innovation. So let's start with a topic we began the day with, money. Are so-called stable coins a better way to move money in these difficult times? So to discuss this, we are joined by Catherine Coley, who is the CEO of Binance US, which has amongst its products a stable coin known as BUSD. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you, guys. Really excited to be here. Hey there. So Catherine, in a Coindesk op-ed, you argued that the US should use stable coins to deliver stimulus payments during the COVID crisis. Can you break down your argument for us? Yes. Yeah, so we, we witnessed something that was changing drastically. It was our lives being pushed into our homes and access to fiat currencies and banks quite difficult. So when I was thinking through the problems we were facing, I said, what do we have on hand technology wise that could solve this issue? And we've been able to move digital assets into people's hands from their couch, from phone to phone, easily and safely, keeping the health of our citizens in mind. And so my thought was, what do we have already, which was stable coins? How could we distribute this better? And so stable coins are backed by the US dollar, regulated by the New York DFS. These are all the things I, I put into factors of saying how we could move forward with technology to make a, a better outcome for stimulus payments. Hi, Catherine. I was wondering, is the stable coin, or is the crisis making real world payments a more common use for stable coins? Or are these tokens still mostly just used by crypto exchanges? They're still predominantly used by crypto exchanges and those that are seeking to find different ways of getting payments. So you see companies like BitPay, which has been around forever, allowing now BUSD to be a payment, make, uh, payment method for companies like Verizon Payments, AWS, or even the uh, Chainalysis and uh, Elliptic, uh, different types of uh, technologies that we use inside of the crypto industry to accept payments for that. So we're seeing adoption in those, but I think the, the main part here is just being able to realize that you can do this without having to go down the, uh, the slower route. And obviously we saw during the market meltdown in March that Binance USD's uh, stablecoin rose tenfold. What was driving that demand? You're seeing a huge demand for stable coins across the board. You see this pick up as people realizing there might be a more stable way for them to put funds in and have either yield creating items. Um, the you know the interest rates you're able to get off of stable coins has been predominantly more productive than what you're seeing on the the current markets and the US. And so beyond that, you're able to see people just navigating in and out of the volatile assets to a stable asset um, more quickly through stable coins. Catherine, right now, BUSD is a dollar backed stable coin, you know, the classic model where you pledge to maintain dollar reserves that can stand up the value and sort of maintain the stability by holding that out. Um, but you could do it, of course, with other assets. Is the crisis driving you to look at other options like gold, for example? You know, it hasn't brought us to the level of looking to back things up through other coins. I think it has led us to see a, a pure adoption of Bitcoin uh, and other digital assets in that framework. So when we've seen in the quarantine, we've seen a 2x of our app downloads with a surge of access from active traders wanting to participate in these 24-7 digital markets. 
So beyond the idea of just forcing things into a, a backed coin or a stable coin, you're seeing people recognize that digital asset markets are something that are easily accessible, uh, very, uh, you know, uh, liquid, as well as ways for them to participate in something that the rest of the world can partake into. Okay, and and you know you alluded to it earlier, but the, in January, the New York Department of Financial Services authorized BUSD as a listing asset. So, what does that mean for users? And I, and I think it's important because you know the NYDFS's initial uh, work on this, the Bit license, was often criticized for being too onerous. You know, and if we're trying to make stable coins a fluid payment vehicle for everybody. Doesn't the you know KYC identification requirements doesn't that kind of you kind know, of get away from the idea that this stuff could be like cash? So BUSD, as uh, you mentioned, regulated by the New York DFS, it's custodied. All the dollars are custodied with Paxos, um, which has a trust uh, co license, as well as just understanding the mechanisms in place to know that each dollar is backing each BUSD. So it's a one to one backing for that asset. So I think those are the important steps for people to gain comfort in uh, opening up their, their kind of minds and saying, okay, how can I be investing in things that are now digital? And Catherine, stablecoin issuers typically make money by investing the underlying reserve currency holdings in a safe and liquid asset such as T-bills. But with the COVID response driving interest rates to zero, is that still a viable business model? I think people are innovating on all fronts. We see uh, elements where you thought there would be uh, consistent businesses over time now evaporated. And so people are becoming creative as well as making sure that we're able to continue offering uh, you know, stable platforms like BUSD. And I believe you also have an announcement. Is there something new going on with Binance US? There is. So Binance US today just launched our OTC trading portal. So we've been opening up different ways for people to access crypto, first by our traditional trading platform with order books for over 30 digital assets. Then we had our buy crypto to allow people to buy uh, you know, a select group of coins quickly through US dollars. And now we've opened it up for those that want to be trading in sizes larger than $10,000. So You've got each way of being able to access these markets. Under $10,000, you can use our Buy Crypto, crypto Portal. Above $10,000, you can use our OTC Desk. And you can always trade through market and limit orders on our trading platform. And is that available in all 50 states? Or is it, again, the 37 that you're currently in? Yes, it's available in the 37 states that we operate in. We're working on the licenses for the remaining 13. Um, those are a work in progress, and we really hope that our state regulators are staying healthy and able to go through the processing for those papers. But right, it, comes well, at, we'll it comes at an exciting time because you're seeing this adoption of more institutional players. We just saw Paul Tudor Jones speak up about owning almost 2% of his uh uh, net worth in Bitcoin. So as people are wanting to have access quickly into these markets, it helps to be able to be able to buy quickly in, in lump sizes, or as well as break down and, and go in um, with smaller bites. So we've got all forms of ways to access these markets here with Binance US. Great. All right, Catherine, thank you so much for your time. I think that's all we have time for for now. I really appreciate all those uh, updates and everything else. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. So if you haven't